Greetings in the name of the King. Welcome to the Kingdom Culture Center. Let's turn to, I want you to understand, I, I, I want you to know this. Uh, I like to keep my sessions, I'm getting a really, getting a hang of these sessions of, uh, of YouTube. And I really want you to uh, understand the significance of Jesus' present. I was reading an article the other day where this guy wrote a whole three page, I printed out, um, article regarding what was the purpose of Jesus coming here on this planet. And I found it highly unusual because as I was reading and he was writing, and excuse me, this was an individual that supposedly uh, had knowledge of the word. And I found it a little strange. And each time, and he got to um, Matthew 4 and 17, and uh, which kind of <laughs> kind of made me uh, chuckle when I read it. And he says, and he read this part. Listen. Matthew 4 and 17. For the time, for that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his purpose. To restore what we lost, what man lost, and that was a kingdom. And I cannot emphasize that enough. But I also want you to know this one thing. Jesus didn't come to bring peace. So if you're going through trials and tribulations, and you're going through some challenges, because of your lifestyle and the principles that you have embraced and the laws you have embraced, God's laws, he didn't come to bring peace. Now let me let me let me let me help you out here. I know this may throw some of you. Why don't you go to Luke 12 chapter? Luke 12 and um, 49 to the 50 uh, 53rd verse. I want you to follow me here. Follow me closely. I came to send fire on the earth. And now I wish it was already kindred. Can you understand what he's saying? He's saying, I came to bring fire to the earth. And I wish it already had started. But listen where we go on. But I have a baptism to be baptized. What he's saying, I have a purpose to complete. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how distressed I am till it is accomplished. In other words, he has to stay, work at it until it's accomplished. He can't do anything else. Listen what he goes on to say. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? This is Jesus speaking. He goes on to say, I tell you, not at all, but rather division. When you start living a life, and you don't even really have to say much, you start living a life and behaving according to God's word and embracing and living according to his word. You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. From that point on, you grow to know him. You study the word. You stay in the word. And the more you study God's word, the more holy you become. What is holy? Separated from those around you, from your old acquaintances. Even in, let me show you how powerful this word is. Even in the midst of a confused home, if you stayed Focus in his word. You go into your room in the middle of chaos. You stay there and focus on it. Your life will change. And the Holy God will deliver you from that. He'll deliver you from here and from the physical aspect of it. Because the word is powerful. The word separates. So when you're going through troubles and tests with your landlord, with your family, don't expect it's something new. My, my words are so many times, you need to get a clue. 
because he's stating right here, you're not going to have it. You're going to be challenged. This is what he goes on to say. For from now on, five in one house will be divided. Three against two and two against three. That's what the word does. What does that mean? When you want, they may choose to live a certain way. You choose to follow Christ. They may choose to live in the valley. You choose to live in the rooftop, in the mountaintop. They may choose to, to, uh, to smoke and get high and make decisions of that. You choose to walk and live by God's word. They may choose to party and go out and come on Sunday morning and then go to, as if they did something. You choose to live holy and separate at all times. Why? Because you are the light of the world. Jesus made that plain. You're a city set upon a hill. And if you're the light of the world, then you live that lifestyle. You have a choice. God gave us choice. We can make that decision. And it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be easy for some. It's not gonna be easy. I know for me it wasn't. But when you make up your mind and say, hey, this is it, and you look beyond what you're looking at. You look beyond. You see deliverance. You see a changed life. Right now you may say, well, how come they're having all this? And look, this world's temporary, brother. Sister, it's temporary. Get over it. You may be in Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, and you got to learn to live by the word. Don't follow anyone else. I say it over and over again. When you're a kingdom citizen, a kingdom citizen is suave, cool, calm, collected. Hey, man, why? Because I trust in his word. I don't sweat the small stuff. My son can tell you, I don't sweat the small stuff. I trust it. A lot of times my wife, I have to calm my wife down to certain things. When she, but she, she keep following me, she's going to be cool, calm, and collected. Why? I trust in his word, and she's getting there. See, there's no boss in my home. There's a leader. She's a leader. I'm a leader. I told my son the other day. We went over to his house and we sat down and we talked. And I told him I said this. You know what? You know what my wife does. You know what your mother does. She critiques me. I look back over my life every year. We just had today is our uh, our anniversary, and I look back. Our fourth anniversary, and I look back where I came from. See, I was married before. She was married before. But see, the one thing about I love about the Lord is that he takes you out of that, forgive you, all that. You get your act that. You make up your mind. I'm going to live for him. And you straighten, and then you grow. Woo! You grow constantly. See, that's why I'm going to share something else with you. Let's see here. I write, write some stuff down because if I don't, I'll... I'll have to start looking for it like I did last time. But I want you to look at this here, this one thing here. Ah, um, uh, yeah. Okay. I want you to turn to Luke 10 and 3. Turn to Luke 10 and 3. This is why. This is why. I do not believe in fighting. God had told, and he also did it with Peter. He told Peter to put up his sword in the midst of the garden when the Judas came and kissed him. But I, this is why. Now I have to make this little, I may have to continue this in the next session. This is why. Jesus said, the second, Matthew, Luke 10, and uh, the second verse. He said to them, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord, the landlord, who's the, hey, that's God, of the harvest, to send out laborers into the harvest. 
Go your way. This is Jesus speaking now. Check this out. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. I just want to say this right here, and then I have to go to the next session. But listen, I have never seen a lamb take on a wolf. I've never seen a lamb take on a lion. He says, I send you out lambs as going towards in wolves. Why? We are to constantly maintain and trust the Lord. The king will protect us. God don't need you to protect yourself. That's why he has angels. Remember, this battle is not fought with physical, but with spiritual principalities. Okay, look. This session is going to be over. But the next session, we're going to go a little more in depth than that. Until then, you have a nice day.